Hello, today I'm going to do another test. I'm going to take my E up and my Tesla for a small competition. So uh, first of all, I, I've charged this up to 90% now. I don't want to charge it all the way up to 100 because then I lose regeneration down the hill. But it's quite a distance, so I'm a better route planner, as you can see, uh, estimates that I will get back with about 19% state of charge. I'm not entirely sure how accurate that is, so uh, <laughs> we'll see. But uh, the goal of this test is really to see which car is most efficient. So first of all, when I drive, um, I will measure the consumption and then multiply it by the kilometers. Uh, anyway, um, let's get into the car. And uh, by the way, the, the route I'm driving is from Connery School, which you see behind here, to a place called Grelland. It's about one hour back and forth, but it's a mix of highway and small roads and hilly, hill up and downs. And so it should be a good mix. And um, I suspect that the EF will win in the consumption, but we'll see how many kilowatt hours both of them need uh, to get back and forth. This is basically physics, so... <laughs> anyway, let's, let's get in the car. So, the first checkpoint. Uh, I've driven the first part of the countryside uh, part. Now, this screen is really hard to read in this sunlight. But so far, I've spent 68 watt-hours per kilometer, and I've driven about 13 kilometers, according to this car. One thing to note is that these cars will measure distance differently, but still the consumption will be correct when you add them up. So, because this one takes the total consumption and divides it by what it thinks it has driven, uh, the same thing for the Tesla. So, um, so far, yeah, 13 kilometers, uh, 68 watt hours per kilometer. Can we see this at all? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> All right, moving on. Next checkpoint is halfway there, and this will be the um, highway section, half of the highway section. All right, I am at Gerlan, and I have a little more than half battery left. I'm not sure if I'm going to make it back with 19% state of charge. Uh, it looks more like 10, 15 maybe. But it's an uphill, so maybe I'll go all the way down to 10%. At least I'm happy I charged to 90. Uh, anyway, so far I have driven 33 kilometers. The average consumption is 125 watt hour per kilometer. So the last leg now is going to be higher consumption. Hopefully I'll make it back. <laughs> all right, next checkpoint after the highway the other direction. All right, last checkpoint. So far I've spent 100, 138 watt hours per kilometers and I've driven 51 kilometers. So not too bad. We'll see when I get back. Uh, I have about 20, about 30 percent state of charge. I'm not sure how visible that is. Um, so I'm not sure if I can get home with using only 10%, but we'll see how much it's going to be spent, but uh, I'm going to get back at least. All right, I'm back at the start, at the school, as you can see here. Uh, I've driven, according to the car, 64 kilometers, and it has spent 140 watt-hours per kilometer. It's a bit tougher hill up uh, when I get back. You can see the range is <laughs> quite low now. Uh, but I also, uh, the highway is doing a number on this car, so... But if you add these two, or multiply these together, you get 9 kilowatt hours. So that's the result for the e -up. Now let's see how the X does. Next up is the Model X. I've charged it up to 80%, and as you can see, a better route planner claims that it will go from 90% to 76%. That is, it will use about 40% state of charge, 14% state of charge. But um, we'll see about that. 
Uh, I'm going to use scan my Tesla because I don't think the consumption meter inside the Tesla measures the cons consumption when standing still like the EAP does. So to compare apples to apples, I will use that instead, uh, instead of the in uh, onboard uh, uh, trip meter that is. So let's see if the Model X can beat 9 kilowatt hours. Right, first part of the trip done, and holy moly, look at the reflection here. <laughs> so the EAP at this point, I think it had 68 watt hour per kilometer. It's a much lighter car, uh, and the first part doesn't have anything to do with aerodynamics because it's so slow. So 101 watt hour per kilometer, and uh, approximately the same distance as the EAP reported, 13.6 kilometers. Uh, right now I'm using 1.3, I've used 1.38 kilowatt hours, <laughs> so I have a budget of 7.4 if I'm to make it, but uh, I'm going to drive the same speed as I did in the AEOP uh, just to make it fair. But so far it's consuming much more, but um, highway is really the EAP's Achilles heel, so we'll see how we do when we get to Greland. Alright, I'm halfway at Grelland, the gas station, and uh, I've driven 33.7 kilometers, and the consumption is 169 watt hour per kilometer. So the Tesla has actually cheated a bit because for about uh, one kilometer uh, there was an accident in the tunnel, so they lowered the speed limit to 50. So it should be a little bit higher, but I've spent 5.68 kilowatt hours, so I'm behind the EAP anyway. <laughs> and uh, another thing is that um, a better route planner estimated that I would arrive with 64% state of charge. Uh, I've used 7% so far, so if this holds, which it won't because I'm going to go uphill back home, it would be 66% when I arrive, but I think maybe uh, a better route planner will be spot on in this case. We'll see. <laughs> Next stop is uh, the checkpoint after the highway, and then it's back up the hill and home. Alright, last checkpoint before getting back to the school. So far I've spent 188 watt hours per kilometer for a total of 9.79, which is quite a bit higher than the EAP. So clearly the EAP is more efficient in total. But what's funny is um, I thought that the um, onboard um, consumption rating on the Model X was a bit low, but yeah, it, it is slightly low, but not as much as I thought. So you can see I've gone 52.2 kilometers here, and with 188 watt hours per kilometer, that includes energy spent at the stops. Here is what uh, Tesla says I've spent the last um, 50 kilometers. It's 185 watt hour per kilometers. So it's not really that bad, and um, considering that I've, uh, it doesn't, since it doesn't count when I stop, uh, that should be quite accurate, actually. <laughs> also, uh, on the way back, I drove a bit faster through that tunnel where the accident was, so I shouldn't, um, uh, you know, uh, to, to compensate a bit for the accident and the 50 kilometers per hour. Anyway, 52 kilometers so far, 188 watt hour per kilometer, and now it's up to 9.8. <laughs> so you can see it's counting, it's spending energy when I'm standing still. All right, I'm back at the school, and let's see the result. So the Model X did 202 watt hour per kilometer. That means, uh, well, it, it, it's driven 65.7 kilometers, which gives a total consumption of 13.3 kilowatt hours. And uh, it's funny, uh, going up the hill back home is more energy intensive than going fast on the highway with this car. There was also a couple of instances where I kind of forgot I was in a test and uh, hit the watt pedal a bit too hard. It's so easy in this car. <laughs> but I'll um, make a table and uh, line it up and um, 
compare each leg. So first I'm going to drive home and bake some bread and eat dinner. <laughs> then I'll make the table. So the, uh, the bread is ready and um, I've uh, put in the numbers in the spreadsheet and to compare the result. And uh, here it is. <laughs> so uh, one thing that's uh, interesting to notice is that uh, in the end the EF said it has had driven 64 kilometers while the Tesla said it or scan my Tesla said it had driven 65.7 kilometers. So that's a slight difference but it's not as big as I expected. I know that Tesla is just about spot on when comparing to Google Maps, but I haven't really compared it this time. But uh, anyway, that's the reason why I didn't just take the consumption numbers and using the um, kilometers from the map, you have to take the car. Anyway, the results are kind of clear. The EF beat the Tesla hands down when it comes to efficiency. But what's interesting is um, if one look at the legs, the first leg is downhill. Uh, there's not much difference there, but um, uh, the Tesla spent about 50% more. Then on the second leg uh, and third leg, which is uh, highway, the Tesla was considerably more efficient uh, comparatively. But on the last leg, it's way worse again because that's uphill and the Tesla weighs two and a half tons and the EUP weighs 1.2 tons. So it's almost twice as heavy and that's where the, the physics parts come in. <laughs> you just can't... Uh, there is a point where weight and going uphill, you need a certain amount of energy to, to move the thing. Um, and uh, in the end the EUP spent nine kilowatt hours and the Tesla spent 13.3 kilowatt hours. So that's uh, a cumulative almost 50% more. However, if it was only highway and on the flat stretch, then the Tesla would do much better. So I guess that's it for today. So until next time, bye bye.